Say with us how thou hast said, we might go as thou hast gone. Yeah. Do thou hast done. Yeah. Make us witness and warrior and testify and thanks to your goodness and your grace. God, we all stand in the need of a blessing this morning. Yeah. Pray God this word is tailor made for our spiritual growth and our development. And when we leave this place, our lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Every heart, every believer, put your hands together and say amen. Yeah. Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, for our hearing this morning, Colossians chapter 2, key didn't want one verse this morning, but I actually want to read just a few, Colossians chapter 2. chapter 2. We'd like to do a two-week series, amen, two Sunday series on Colossians chapter 2 for our hearing this morning, Colossians chapter 2. Get at verse number 6. As you have received or have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, watch out, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. Y'all see that? Yeah. Read again, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after, watch this, the tradition of men. Y'all see that? After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Amen. Verse number nine. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For in him dwelleth all. Y'all see that? Yeah. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. For the next two weeks, the next two Sundays rather, we'd like to tag this text with this thought in mind. Walking in Christ. Walking in Christ, you may be seated. Walking in Christ. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Understand, take in these two messages that will be preached in our hearing. All messages are tailor-made for our spiritual growth and our development. However, I do want all of us to make crystal clear that we are absorbing the messages over the next two Sundays. Amen. Walking in Christ. It has oftentimes uh, puzzled me and has honestly uh, 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 caused my eyebrows to raise when I run into certain people who, if you will, uh, have a seemingly understanding of who Christ is. <laughs> Seem to have a level of knowledge uh, by way of Christ that is unbeknownst to many other people. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they know how to go through uh, the liturgy, if you will, of church antics. Yeah. Uh, nobody has to tell them what's on the script, rather, or on the program. They know when to clap their hands. They know when to pat their feet. They know when to say amen. They know when the benediction is coming. They know yeah. when the pastor's going to his clothes. Yeah. They know church function. Yeah. Are you in here? 
And one of the things that puzzles me and troubles me, brothers and sisters, is for that individual or those individuals, and all of us fall into the category every once in a while, even in our lives, since we've been saved, that we stress, we struggle, and we strain by way of handling storms, even though we know who has the ability to carry us through the storm. It's easy for me to encourage you when everything uh, is going right in my life. It's easy for me to, 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 to encourage you, to tell you everything is going to be all right. Don't worry. Don't hang your hat. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. But when the monkey or the reverberal monkey is on my back and I'm the one uh, struggling in the hospital, I'm the one going from jailhouse to jailhouse uh, because of my children, I'm the one wrestling, struggling uh, in the wee hours of the night asking God to keep me in perfect peace. Come on, y'all. You see, it's easy for me to help you when I'm not going through anything right now. But look at a neighbor and say, baby, just keep on living. Either you're headed to a storm, coming out of a storm, or you're going on, on your way into a storm. Storms are inevitable. Problems are inevitable. Backstabbers are inevitable. Come on, let me have folks who talk out of both sides of their mouth are inevitable. But you can find peace, you can find solace, you can find comfort in the reality that you don't have to go low. All you have to do is take the high road. All you have to do is pray for them. All you have to do is take their names and put them at the foot of Jesus. And every time they see you smile, every time they see you lift Jesus, Jesus. Every time they see you lift up your head toward heaven, they wonder why you ain't lost it. Because they thought you should have broke down. But what they didn't know was that your breakdown was your breakthrough. Do I have 20 folk in the building who can stand on your feet and say, baby, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out. I was made for this, and you can't kick me out because you didn't bring me in. I was made for this. I'm a full bona fide eagle, so I fly higher and higher and higher. You have to know who you are because folk don't want to change. But it's not for you to change other folk. It's incumbent on you to ask God to change you. Rewind play. Quit asking God to fix other folk and ask God to work on you. Because truth be told, you ain't all that and a bag of Lay's potato chips. You still got some hiccups, some wrinkles, so come on, help me in here. You still got, you still dealing with your own problems. You got problems? I have problems? All oh, God's children have problems. Huh? But a mature Christian don't take his problems to folk who can't solve them. Mature Christians take their problems to the problem side. Oh, you need oh 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 you need a good song right there. That problem that I had just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried. I kept getting deeply involved, but I turned it over to Jesus. I stopped worrying about it. I turned it over to Jesus, and guess what he did? He worked it out. Do I have anybody in the building who can testify? He worked it out. I was busted, but he worked it out. I was messed up, but he worked it out. I was sick, but he worked it out. There's no secret to what God can do. What he done for other folk, he can do the same thing for you. I thought you said he can do it, he can do it, he can do it. Oh, y'all ain't high five nobody. We got sanitizer in the fall, yeah? How about somebody say, baby, he did it for me. Mm. And so, Paul's concerned by the way of context. Will uh, is concerned for the church that arrests our attention in our text this morning. Is that they not only know who they are in Christ, but what they have. In Christ. Who Paul says very pointedly 
in chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, is the storehouse, it's in your Bible if you ain't tore it out, where God has hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now note here, it's worth mentioning because I do word studies on the text. And what you'll discover is that word hid or hidden does not mean that the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are concealed but rather they are stored up to be accessible to us. All you have to do is live right. Oh, we don't want to talk about how we live. All you have to do is treat folk like you want to be treated. Talk to folk like you want to be talked to. Learn how to respect folk because respect is earned and not given. And God said when you treat folk, when you handle folk, when you pray for folk who despitefully use you, God says, oh, I got some blessings for you because you're exercising spiritual authority. You see, we want it, but we don't want to do what it takes to get it. I'll wait. We want the blessings, but we don't want the burdens that come with the big blessings. Come on, help me in here. Huh? You see, you don't eat goldfish, you eat catfish. Goldfish are too small for you to eat. Come on, talk back to me today. Huh? Huh? When I sit down and eat a piece of good fish, come on, talk back to me. I want the biggest fish you got because I like big stuff. That's why you ought to want big blessings because we serve a big God. My father is rich in houses and in land. God owns the whole thing it is. So he has the whole wide world. In his hand. But rather, but rather, but rather, but rather, uh, these treasures are stored up to be accessible unto us. There was a group that had hid, or rather, had risen up against Christianity called the Gnostics. These folk claim to have had a superior hidden knowledge and Paul's aim and premise uh, was to warn those people who were being influenced by such heresy and belief. Here in this book and even in this chapter, Paul keeps Jesus as the central focus of the Christian's belief. Here it is. Everywhere you go, don't leave Jesus behind. You ought to be talking. Come on, help me in here. As a matter of fact, you are where you are today because somebody in your nearby proximity had enough sense to take you to the altar. Somebody had enough sense to teach you about a man named Jesus. You didn't just wake up knowing about Jesus. You had to be taught. Are you in here? So, Jesus said the focus. Belief. Paul keeps Christ. It's the focal point. Only in the plan of God. Huh? But in all of our lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you in here? Yes, sir. Paul's concerned that these folk would listen, entertain too much sidebar talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, sideline, let me tell you something. Sideline talkers can never be water walkers. I'll wait. That's a good hashtag for you. Folk are on the sideline for a reason. They want to play, but they didn't show up for practice. Are you in here? And those are indicative of folk who want God's blessings, but they're not willing to exercise to get what. Come on, y'all. You see, you can't get bigger and stronger lifting the same weight. So it doesn't mean, come on, y'all, the only way you can grow spiritually is that you have to fall on your face, be exposed to the Holy Spirit, and he'll point you in the right direction. Somebody in here ought to be able to testify. It was not until you got by yourself that you had a talk with Jesus and go 